الحياة في مجملها خطوات إما بنخطوها في الطريق نحو الهدف أو لا طريق ولا هدف اهلا بحضراتكم في برنامجكم خطوات قدام من استديوهات الكارما بكندا برنامج مباشر على الهواء مباشره وبيتعاد في اوقات مختلفه النهارده في الغرب في كندا احنا في اسبوع الالام الباشن ويك الاسبوع اللي بنفتكر فيه كلنا اهم حدث في تاريخ البشريه صلب وموت ودفن وقيامه ربنا وخلصنا وسيدنا فدينا يسوع المسيح منتصرا من الاموات وصاعدا الى يمين العظمه في الاعالي بعد ايام من ظهوره مبتدئا ومتمما الخلاص الثمين. في الشرق لازلنا في ايام الاستعداد حيث نتذكر ونتامل ونستعد لهذه الذكرى المجيده. أشكر الله جدا من أجل كنيسته اللي بتتذكر عمله كل مرة تجتمع فيها إلى أن يجيء وأشكر الله من أجل حق المعلن في كلمته اللي بيشجعنا أن إحنا مش بس نتذكر لكن نعلن هذا الإنجيل لأنفسنا وللآخرين ما دمنا أحياء عشان كده النهاردة الحلقة مهمة جدا لأنها عن موضوع المواضيع الصليب لماذا الصليب؟ لماذا يا ترى اضطر الله أقولها بخشوع وإجلال واحترام وسجود وانكسار لماذا كان الصليب حتميا؟ لماذا كانت الكفارة حتمية؟ ليه يعني القصة اللي انتوا عمالين تقولوها لنا دول من انه الله اتجسد وذهب للصليب ومات تلك الميتة الشنيعة وقام من بين الأموات وصعد عن يمين العظمة في الأعالي؟ ليه الصليب؟ ليه الكفارة؟ هل ما كانش في طريقة تانية؟ هل ما كانش في طريقة تانية الفداء يوصل؟ بيها للبشر الله كان يبين محبته بأي طريقة تانية الله كان يفدي الإنسان ويدفع تمام الخطيب بأي طريقة تانية ولا كان لازم الكفارة والصليب النهاردة أن الحلقة مهمة جدا وعايزين نخاطب قاعدة عريضة جدا من الناس فالحلقة باللغة العربية وأيضا باللغة الإنجليزية علشان نخاطب الشباب اللي بنعمة الله والجيل اللي بيعلن كلمة الإنجيل ونخاطب القادة ونخاطب أيضا شعب الكنيسة في كل مكان تصل إليه قناة الكرم خليكم معنا ومن هذه النقطة فصاعدا الحديث هيبقى باللغتين ومن فضلكم ادعوا الشباب والقادة اللي يقدروا يسمعوا باللغة الإنجليزية عن موضوع مهم جدا لماذا الصليب why the cross لماذا الكفارة why the atonement or why is the atonement necessary أحب أرحب معاكم بضيوفنا وأحبائي وأصدقائي I want to introduce my good friend Rafi Ashamallah Hi Rafi, good to have you here uh, Rafi is on staff at um, Harvest Bible uh, Chapel in uh, Barrie So thank you for coming and uh, you're the youth director there Thank you, uh, thank you for coming Rafi thank And um, I also want to welcome my good friend uh, Pastor Will, Will Souza is the pastor of Cross Point Bible Church in Angus. So we have Barry and Angus. Uh, <laughs> we love the north, uh, where it's much nicer than here. Uh, thank you as well for coming. And I know that this message is very endeared to you, Rafi, and to you, Will. Uh, Uh, فادي الفايس uh, بريزيدنت للمينا ليدرشيب سنتر خدمه اللي بتدرب خدام من كل المناطق في المينا ريجن uh, بشكر الله من اجلك يا فادي ومن اجل وجودك معانا ومن اجل مشاركتك لكلمه الانجيل uh, معنا شكرا um, there is no other topic 
that we could spend our life here on earth trying to understand, preach, grasp our minds around, and preach other than the cross and the resurrection, right? And we are in this very week where we don't just remember and ponder, maybe also relive the moments. I think the Bible encourages us to relive it every day and to preach the gospel to ourselves always. But we are in this very week to recall not just the gravity of what happened, the amazing work of the cross, the fulfilled, the complete work of the cross, but rather a basic question of why the cross? And the Sarah Hafedi, we've been asked this question all the time. Why, why is it necessary? Why would Christ have to come and die on the cross? Isn't there any other way? So this episode, both in English and Arabic, will be an attempt to expand on this topic. Why is the atonement necessary? Maybe answer some objections, but most importantly, explain why was there no other way except the sacrifice, the blood of God incarnate, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, so I'll just maybe take one statement from each of you and then, you know, come delve into the topic. Um, and I'll start with you, Rafi. And before starting, I want also to thank you for coming in this week where I know you mourn the departure of your grandmother. So um, our hearts are with you, brother, and with your precious family. Thank you. May the Lord be with you thank and you. comfort you. And I know we have an amazing comfort Thank and you. hope in the resurrection. So yes. isn't the timing mm -hmm. just That's so right. remarkable? Right. Rafi, um, thank you again. But why is the cross necessary? Um, if we want to summarize it in one statement, I can think of the, um, the verse in Hebrews where it says, uh, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So um, death is the consequence of sin. Um, and because sin is in the world, sin has been introduced into the world, mm. um, God needs to be satisfied and he cannot tolerate sin because mm. he's a holy God. So death is the, the consequence of sin and therefore there must be a punishment to be made and Christ is the only one who can fulfill that punishment mm. because he represents God and he represents man because he is both the God-man. Amen. Amen. How about you, Will? I love Romans uh, 8. You know, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. Mm. Right? For the law of the spirit, um, excuse me, for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. Mm. So when I think of why the cross only god could satisfy god hmm. right the law cannot save you the law can only tell you about sin mm. if it wasn't for the law i wouldn't know what sin is but god was, was the only one who would be able to do what the law could not do hmm. and so that's why only god can satisfy god yeah amen 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 fadi لماذا كان الصليب حتميا actually this uh, هذا سؤال مهم جدا للدرجة إنه المسيح نفسه في البستان لما كان يصلي كان يطلب إنه هل في طريقة تانية كان يطلب من الله الآب هل في طريقة أخرى هذا بدل على حتمية موضوع الصليب في فكر الله في فكر الله الآب في فكر الله الإبن وأيضا فكر الله روح القدس وزي ما حكى رافي الآبي عبرانيين بدون سفك دماء لا يمكن إرضاءه ففا كان لابد لأني أنا خاطي ما فيش أي حل تاني غير الصليب ورح نحكي كمان شوي جربنا كل الأشياء إحنا ب... كإنسان جربنا الدين جربنا الدبائح جربنا لكن لم يكفي 
الا صليب المسيح وهذا مم. موضوع مهم جدا وانا ما ما بحتاج الا الصليب لا اقدر انا اعيش بدون الصليب امين Here's what the Apostle Paul says. هذا ما يقوله رسول بولس. لأن اليهود في كورنثوس الأولى واحد لأن اليهود يسألون آية عن الصليب يسألون علامة واليونانيين يطلبون حكمة ولكننا نحن نكرز بالمسيح مصلوبا لليهود عثرة ولليونانيين جهالة. وأما للمدعوين يهودا ويونانيين فبالمسيح قوة الله وحكمة الله لأن جهالة الله أحكم من الناس وضعف الله أقوى من الناس For the Jews demand signs and the Greeks seek wisdom but we preach Christ crucified a stumbling block to the Jews and folly to the Gentiles But to those who are called, both, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. It sounds to me that when Paul was speaking about the cross, he wasn't speaking primarily about what the Jews want to see, a sign. Or, one, or what the Greeks want to see, kind of a philosophical equation, some wisdom. But primarily, he is speaking about the wisdom of God and the power of God. Or rather, what starts with God, what God is um, implying, what In other words, what satisfies God first. Um, and it all starts with God. It's, it's a common mistake that we think that you know, the cross is the solution only for us. I think the cross is primarily the solution that God provided for God. Like you said, God, it needs God to satisfy God. So the Bible teaches us that God is of a different nature than us. He is so transcendent, so holy. So holy to the extent that our limited, sinful, um, crippled mentalities couldn't grasp. So holy to the extent that you know, our sin-tainted consciousness couldn't just feel. He is so, 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 so holy that there has to be something about it. And we are yet to understand in our limited you know, capacities. So tell us more roughly about this you know, holiness of God, because I think without Starting with God, we miss the whole idea of the cross. Right. Yeah, absolutely. When I think of the holiness of God, I think pr primarily of two kind of categories. There is the sense where God is holy and is transcendence. There's no one like him. He's completely other. He's just completely different from any other creature, any other being. Um, so he's transcendent. Transcendent then, means like he is way superior, yes. way different yeah. than us yeah. mortals. Yeah, yeah, he's above everything. Um, the other aspect of holiness I think of is his moral purity. He is completely morally pure. And you kind of see both of these pictures, you know, in the famous chapter of Isaiah chapter 6, where the angels, you know, have six wings and two are covering their face and two are covering their, you know, their feet and then two they're flying. Um, and the angels don't, they're, they're, they're sinless as well, like God. But that goes to show you the transcendence. Like no so for one us, angels are pure, right? More yeah, they, exactly. Um, pure. Yeah, exactly. So that just goes to show you the, the transcendence of it. But then when Isaiah sees it, he, he recognizes his own sin. So there's both at play, the, like the the fact that God is completely above everything and that he's so completely morally pure. Um, 
that the first thing that Isaiah thinks of is, woe is me, mm. I'm a man of unclean lips. Mm. So when I think of the holiness of God, it's kind of both of those together. So in the sight of God, Isaiah sees the holy angels unholy in comparison to the majestic holiness of God, right? So that they, they, they hide their, mm -hmm. you know, themselves mm -hmm. just to be present in the presence of the Lord. Mr. Rafiq, even in the book of Yohanna, we see this picture when the human being is doing the name of Quddus, Quddus, Quddus. So this is the idea that we are here, that the Lord of Allah is very important and very different from me as a human being. It means that we are going to be في الأبدية فهذا بدل على أهمية مبدأ أنه قدسية الله في هذا الموضوع فقدسية الله زي ما حكى رافي هو الله مبتعد أو مش مبتعد هو فوقنا عالي نفس الوقت هو عنده بيورتي عنده كمال كمال كامل وإحنا ما بنفهم هذا الحكي عشان هي كان لازم يكون في الصليب عشان هذا الصليب هو بيعمل الجسر ما بين قداسة الله وخطيتي أنا كإنسان عارف يا فادي كلامك جميل وكلام رافي كل مرة تيجي محضر الله بهذه الطريقة في الكتاب المقدس دايما الصرخة قدوس 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 رب الجنود أمين. سواء من الملائكة أو من القديسين في رؤية خمسة قدوس قدوس أو في رؤية أربعة ناسف داود بالعهد القديم حكى أما أنا فدود لا إنسان <تصفيق> يعني كل ما تشوف أنت قداسة الله وتشوف, إن... وتشوف إنسانيتك تعرف قداش أنت تحتاج إلى الله مم. تحتاج إلى الصليب مم. Every time the presence of God is mentioned in that clear way the, 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 the first utterance would be holy 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 is the Lord of holds. The, the whole earth is full of his glory. That's Isaiah 6. And uh, Revelations 4, uh, 8, it says, Holy, 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 the Lord God who is um, able to do everything. Or um, the Lord God um, who was and is and is to come. It's amazing that every time the presence of God is mentioned, Holiness mm. is, you know, mm. the, the, the song. Mm. Um, you know, when the people of Israel went out of Egypt into the Promised Land, their song was, Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness? In holiness. Mm. Yeah. Well, so holiness is is so different and so pure. And then, what, what, you know, um, how could man stand in this um, scene in his presence? You can't. <laughs> um, it's, you know, we think about God's holiness and, and I like to tell our, our church, God doesn't wear different hats. He's holy, and then he is love, and then he's, right, he is holy. So his love is holy love. His, his mercy is holy mercy. His justice is holy justice. And then he goes and he says, be holy, for I am holy. So in a sense, God imparts that part of his holiness, if I can put it that way. Uh, and there's that expectation that if you're going to come before God and stand before him, you are to be holy. The problem is we can't. We it's not need. just we are we aren't. It's, we aren't. It's, we can't. It's also that we can't. We can't, right? So we're not sinners because we sin. We sin because we're sinners. We are sinners. Hold fact, on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so it's not just that we are not holy, and there are ways that would make us holy. It's that we are not, and we cannot. No, we cannot. So there is no way we can stand in God's presence. Apart from God himself providing a sacrifice. We yeah, cannot. we'll come to that. We'll come to that. But, but yes. But primarily, like we can't. in principle, we can't. We can't. Okay, now what, what is the riddle he said? We are not sinners because we sin. We, are, we sin we because we are sinners. Yes. 
Yeah, expand on that. Yeah, so um, in fact, Paul says the message of the gospel in Romans 5 is that God saw a people who were ungodly, weak, enemies of God. That's a pretty sad picture. Mm -hmm. God from heaven, the Holy One, looks down on humanity and he sees weak, ungodly enemies of God. Mm -hmm. But God, but God in his love for us sends his son Jesus Christ to save weak, ungodly people who are enemies of God. And because of Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, we are now reconciled to God and we have peace with him. So you cannot escape your nature. You are who you are. You need, some, you need a savior. I need a savior. I cannot save myself. This is very helpful, but I want to go back to the nature of God because that's kind of fundamental. Now, the problem is not just that God is, I mean, it's not a problem. It's, uh, you know, it's you, you, you don't really want an unholy God. No. Right? Imagine <laughs> if there is a universe with a God who is less than perfect then it'd be a contradiction <laughs> for sure it's not god <laughs> yes exactly because god by definition should be perfect yes but this would be um a universe that you don't want to live in because all the norms all the the values will be twisted and that's so dangerous yeah. so I, I i i rejoice in god being so distantly, transcendently holy, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, this is very important. I mean, they can Allah can endo the trial. Allah endo situational ethics. Our اخلاقيات تعتمد على الموقف. طبعا. فاحنا هلا بنسميه موجها يعني بطل في عندك. لكن اللي بحكي كان عم بحكي موضوع مهم قصية الله لا تنفصل عن محبة الله. فمهم جدا نذكر إنه الله قدوس الله محبة. من هون ولدت فكرة الصليب والكفارة لأنه قداسة الله ومحبة الله مع بعض هم اللي خلوا لقدر الصليب ده كلام رائع يا فيديو عشان كده أنا عايز يعني عايز برضو نرجع تاني لطبيعة الله ونفهم بقى نفهم القداسة عشان نفهم المحبة أعتقد إحنا عندنا مشكلة في الاثنين يعني إحنا عمرنا ما حنقدر المحبة المطلقة اللي بينها الله لنا في الصليب من غير ما نفهم قداسة الله عمري ما حنقدر قداسة الله من غير ما نفهم محبة الله قداسة الله واضحة على الصليب لما الابن صرخ مم. إيلي إيلي لما شبختني إلهي إلهي لماذا تركتني مم. لأنه كان بهذيك اللحظة قداسة الله الأب ما لم تستطع أن يكون في علاقة مع الابن على الصليب لأنه كان هناك لعنة صار اصبح لعنة الذي لم يعرف خطيه اصبح لعنة هذه هي قدسية الله هذا لهالدرجه الله قدوس الله قدوس لدرجه انه ما بتحمل حتى الخطايا الصغيره لانه كله عنده خطيه فقدسية الله بهذا المفهوم تعطينا مفهوم اكثر عن الله ما حب بنفس الوقت يعني هذول الاثنين بدروش الا يمشوا مع بعض هذا رايز صافي عندنا مشكله اه بالضبط انا بقى عايز امشي معاك الافتراض الهايبوثيتيكال دوت I'll go this hypothetical idea that we have a God who is less holy than our gracious amazing transcendent holy majestic God وده الاله اللي الانسان نفسه فيه او الانسان الطبيعي الخاطي بيعايز اله أم ب بي... اكثر من وجه ايوه المو... يعني عنده اكثر من وجه بتخيل أيوة. انت الله بيتعامل معك بطريقه أيوة. غير الطريقه بتعامل معها مع رافي غير الطريقه بتعامل مع ويل وغير الطريقه معي ويبقى معايا انا حلو و... ولطيف ويعدي لي كل حاجه ولما يجي حد يأذيني يبقى معاه عادل اه لانه حسب لون بشرتك او حسب اسمك او حسب دينك او حسب وضعك المالي يعني أيوة. انت بتخيل الموضوع ده أه. احنا لو في شخص بيتعامل معنا بطريقه ده ما نحبش نتعامل معه فتخيل ما بالك لو هذا هو الله م. اللي احنا نلجا له الله ملجا لنا هذا الملجا عنده صفات مهمه واحده منها قدسيته او انه يكون قدوس لو لم يكن قدوس لم يصبح ملجا فانت بتنهار كل المنظومه الاله اذا لم يكن قدوس أه. عشان هيك انا ما بفهم اشخاص 
يستطيع ان يشككوا بقدسية الله طبعا غالبا اللي بيشكك ده مش تشكيك منطقي ده تشكيك قلبي يعني هو عايز اله حسب سوء القلب الانسان حسب قلب فعشان كده الفاسد الشرير يعني عشان هيك مثلا عند اليونان اللي بتروح على اثنز بتروح مناطق في عندهم مجموعه كبيره من الالهه كل اله بي 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 بيلبي احتياج غريزه معينه للانسان او غريزه اله انواع مختلفه اله الماده اله غير الماده اله الحرب اله الخصوبه للدرجة اله وهكذا للدرجه حطوا اله اسمه الاله المجهول سكت اله المجهول حتى يرضوا اي شيء حتى هم ما بيعرفوا عنه هذا هو الانسان اللي بيمشي فيه الانسان هو بدور على شيء يلبي فكر اللي بده اياه لكن لا يف... لكن الانسان لما بيجلس جلسه حق مع نفسه بيعرف انه الله حق وبيعرف انه نتكلم عن اله قدوس 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 ام ليتس هايبوثيتيكلي ثينك ذات جاد از ليس ذان هولي اور هيز ستاندردز ار نوت ذات هاي وي وود هاف يونيفرس ذات از يو نو نوت ا مورالي ابرايت يونيفرس بس ذس از a reflection of man's desire you know you know when freud said that um, the faith in god or the belief is a wish fulfillment actually i think understanding the nature of man faith in god is uh, or, or is anti wish fulfillment the man wants to believe in a god that that he created that mm-hmm. you know a god that satisfies right. my standards right. not a man that has satisfies god's standards right. right so so in many places in the world well you would know this you know you can get by you can break the law and get by you know in in brazil they told me about negotiation and it's it's you know it's everywhere yeah, that's true right yeah. so you can easily negotiate the moral standards the legal standards because the 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 line can be bent the line can be but if somebody wronged you you would want justice you would want you know justice to be um executed because it it has to be right So God is not partial, right? No. <laughs> I think what what happens what happened at the fall and what happens with humans as we're as people are born every day, you want to be your own god. Hmm. Right? You you want to make your own destiny. And you don't want to be held accountable. But that's just not reality. Oh. Right? Um there is a god. Hmm. There is someone that holds you accountable and there is someone whom you will whom you will have to do you will have to stand before him one day and and sin is rebellion against that that's what sin is and so people that's why the nature of sin the gravity of sin if i can put it that way is that it's it's sin against the holy god hmm we sin against the holy god and so we are worse than we think we are and god is better than we think he is mm-hmm. and we just don't get that mm-hmm. apart from god revealing himself to us mm-hmm. Rafi, I know you would want to expand on that. We are worse than we think we are. Right. And God is way right. better than we think he is. Yeah. No, absolutely. I completely agree. Um I just think of when you think of sin in general, or the way the Bible describes sin, um it says that sin reigns. It says that sin can be obeyed. Sin pays wages. It deceives. It seizes opportunities. It kills. That's the language the Bible uses about sin. So this sounds to me like a master or yeah. A God. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's not like a little problem we have on the side, you know, and like oh, I just have this sin thing. Well, you know, I'll get it under control. It's no. It's you are under its control. It's your. It's you're under its domination. Mm. So, as Will said earlier, you know, we are sinners, fundamentally. and we sin out of our sinful nature and so like because of that like the bible says that scripture imprisoned everything under sin hmm. imprisoned we're helpless um so our natural bent is toward evil 
and it's not a popular message today. Uh, people don't like it. You know, people don't like to be hurt. Like people to tell them, like, oh, by the way, you know, you're actually not that great. Yeah. <laughs> you're you know? naturally depraved. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, thank you very much. You know? <laughs> yeah. They don't like to hear that. And and even the way we raise kids now, it's like you know, affirm him for everything and anything. Just you know, um, even if he does wrong, just affirm. Just keep encouraging. You know, if I'm encouraging him and he's on the wrong direction. I'm just sending him to... But they don't need encouragement. Kids nowadays, they don't need... I mean, they are really on, on their own way of yeah. destruction. Of course. But I was talking about Allah, I was talking about Allah, and the person was talking about it. One time I was in the Hind, so I was talking to someone, and in the end, as I loved him, he gave me a message. So I discovered that this message is the one who is following him. فهو كان حاب الاله تبعه لدرجه انه اعطاني اياه. ف... او حبك انت لدرجه انه اداك اله. اه اداه اله فرسم رسم وطبعا عنده 17 ايد وخمس عيون يعني فكنت عم بحكي معه اكثر انه هذه الرسمه اذا رف... انعكاس عن صورته واحتياجه للاله اللي هو بفكر فيه فهو كان بيحكي زي ويل هو رسم الهه اله في بطونه هو رسم اله خاص فيه. وهذا الحكي موجود عندنا هذا اليوم فالسؤال هو هل انت بتحتاج ترسم الهك ولا ترجع لاله الخالق ده كلام خطير يا فادي انا عايزك تاخدني معك في الهند الله يخليك عشان افهم بقى كل كل اصحابي بيرجعوا بمشاكل نشوف مسعد من مصر اهلي مسعد كل سنه وانت طيب الو اهلا بيك مساء الخير صباح الخير عليكم صباح النور اهلا بيك يا موسى تفضل ربنا يبارك وبارك القدام اللي معاك ربي يباركك الموضوع كنت بتقولوه عن الكفاره وذبحت النسيح صح كده؟ مظبوط ايه سؤالك؟ القداسه انا هسيب القداسه بس الكفاره وذبحت النسيح اتفضل دي مش بي تشيل ايد الذبيحه اللي كانوا بيقدموها في دور عادي القديم ما بيخطئوا ويعملوا خطيه؟ معلش قول سؤالك تاني لو سمحت. هو هو سؤال انا اتفرجت لقيمة دوان على البرنامج اكثر مرة وجات له اسئله على الفيسبوك بيقولوا له ان انتم كذابين ان الله رفعه ما صلبوش ومعمروش ومسيح ما اتصرفش. أيوه. لكن انا بقول لهم في عيد الضحيه انتوا بتقدموا ذبيحه والذبيحه دي بتقولوا بناخد منها الدم وبنحطها على العتبه منع للحسد وعشان خطايانا خطايانا كلها بتتذكر أيوه. أيوه. لما بنحط ايدينا عليها. ايوه تمام. كنت عاوز اقول لهم دي هي ذبيحه المسيح اللي انتوا ما تعرفهاش. واللي احنا المفروض نقول لهم عليها ونبشرهم بيها عشان ما يقولوناش ان احنا كذابين شكرا احنا بنضحك عليهم ان المسيح الصلب وامن بين الاموات شكرا وعشان نثبت لهم ان المسيح هو الاله المتكفل اللي مات من اجلنا وقدم ذبيحه حيه مقطيه اشتمها الاب ويرجع عننا ويفلوا خطايانا شكرا ليك يا مسعد تعليق جميل وانا هطلب من مهندس فادي انه يعلق على الموضوع ده شكرا ليك يا مسعد وربنا يبارك شكرا شكرا مسعد حتى صاحب الهندي لما رسم الاله تبعه على الصوره كان بيدور على نوع من الكفاره امم عشان هيك هذا الشخص الهندي مع مئات الالاف والملايين بروح على نهر يغتسلوا فيه عشان ياخذوا الكفاره الجانجا بالضبط نفس الشيء بالعهد القديم كان في هناك الذبائح رح نحكي عنها الساكرفايسز اللي كانت الذبائح تقدم من اجل ارضاء الله وهذا بتلاحظه موجود حتى احنا الاسبوع هذا الباس اوفر عيد الفصح فسخه في ال بال... بال... عند اليهود عند اليهود وايضا الاعياد الثانيه موجوده كل الاعياد هذه هي اشاره لموضوع الكفاره زي ما حكى مسعود بالتالي الانسان يمارس هذا الموضوع لكن مش فاهم انا لما اذبح بالعهد القديم كان يذبحوا او اي وقت كان يذبحوا الخروف لازم وله صفات خاصه كان هذه الذبيحه الذبيحه يجب ان تكون كامله كامله لازم تكون كامله وهذه الذبيحه تذبح من اجل 
فداء عن الاخرين احنا بنسمي انا اسمي فادي فادي من فديه يفدي شخص اخر مم. فهذا المفهوم كله موجود بكل الاديان لانه هو احتياج انساني لانه الانسان حاول ما نفعتش فاضطر انه بس يعرف انه بالفعل هناك داعي وهناك وجود للصليب فمسعود اصحابك والناس عم بيشوفونا هذا هو الوقت المناسب حتى تقرر هل انت تؤمن بهذه الذبيحه هل تؤمن بالمسيح وموت الكفاري عن خطيتك ولا هتكمل في محاولاتك اللي عمرها ما هتنجح ولا تكمل تذبح خرفان تذبح حمام وارانب ولا وات ايفر انت بدك عاوزها حتى بالهند انت هتكمل تذبح حاجات ثانيه وتعمل حاجات ثانيه حتى مش عارف ممكن نحكي عنها لكن حتى العباده الشيطانيه في عندهم كمان ذبائح يعني مفهوم لانه الانسان بيعرف انه هناك خطيه والخطيه اجرتها موت ويجب ان يكون هناك ثمن امين 100 مية, مية. Can I, can I just, um, one of the things I wanted to say about sin in particular, um, just about, I think it's important to realize that sin affects everything. Mm -hmm. It affects your, what you think, your emotions, your desires, your inclinations, your motivations. It affects everything. That's why we talk about total depravity, because it affects the total person. Think of it in an illustration. You know, sin is more like AIDS, HIV, than it is like cancer. Cancer, a lot of times, can be localized be in, uh, in a certain area of the body. Organ, yeah. yeah, I mean, it could spread, but I mean, like, it, it could just be a certain area of the body. Well, HIV spreads through the entire body. It touches every cell. The same thing with sin. It affects it, the whole faculty of your soul. Mm. Mm. And that's why the solution to it has to be radical. Mm. Radical, the word means, like, right down to the root. It has to go all the way down to the roots. Yes. Mm. And and that that leads us to, you know, given that we know that God is so holy, He doesn't have partial standards, and we really don't want God to be less holy. Otherwise, we'll come up with these drawings. You know, Fedi was given a drawing of a God, in, in a Hindu God, from a friend that drew his own God and gave yeah. it to Fedi. However, that leads us to, you know, so God is so holy, but man is so, like you said, depraved, so sinful. So the nature of man is another big problem. God's holiness is not a problem. You know, God forbid, it's, um, it's something to rejoice in. It's an attribute that we love. Man is so bad, so sinful. You know, in, in the book of Isaiah, it says the whole head is sick. Mm. The whole heart faint, from the sole of the foot, even to the head. There is no sound when, soundness in it, but bruises and sores and raw wounds. Mm. Like, كل الرأس مريد وكل القلب سقيم من أسفل القدم إلى رأس ليس فيه صحة بل جرح وأحباط وضربة طرية المتعصر. Man is so bad, way, way more than. We think we are bad. Mm. Um, tell us more about the nature of sin, or, or maybe um, what is sin? Because sometimes we think that sin is this gross thing that you know people do against us. <laughs> but we are so good. So what is sin, that, and, and why does it bother God so much, right? Why isn't why is God's holiness violated by sin? What, what, what is that? Can I? I wanted to say something. Just a thought that came to me. Um, you know, we're all born under a judgment, right? I mean, uh, we're told in John chapter three that, and this is the judgment: the light has come into the world, and people loved the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. Hmm. So we naturally love our sin. Hmm. You don't have to teach children to love their sin. Hmm. I, hmm. I don't teach my children to be selfish hmm. or, to, you know, or, or to talk back or to have certain attitudes that are just not okay. But, and they love it. And people love their sins. And why? That's the judgment. You're born under a judgment. Wait until they're teenagers and then, <laughs> <laughs> then tell me. But, but what is sin? I would, I would, you know, I was just talking to both my kids about this a while ago. They were asking me, Daddy, what is sin? In a very simple way, I think, for us to understand, sin is anything that I think, 
say or do that goes against God, that is not pleasing to God. So rebellion, right? Um, if I love anything more than God, we're born worshipers. Mm -hmm. If I don't worship God, I'm going to worship something else. Mm -hmm. It's inevitable. I will worship money. I will worship my family. I will worship my cars. I will worship a country. Myself. Myself, right? It's, you cannot escape who you are. Again, so what is sin? It's anything in your life, whether it's thought, word, or deed, that attempts to rob the place of God. Mm. That would be my definition of sin. But the truth is very important, as well. لانه المسيح اعطى مفهوم اخر للخطيه كان بالعهد القديم ال 10 كوماندمنتس الوصايا العشر اي اي خرق لاي وصيه فانت خرقت الوصايا العشر كان لكن المسيح اعطى فكر ثاني كان بيحكي عن موضوع القتل لكن بيحكي اذا انت كرهت عم بيحكي عن خطيه الزنا عم بيحكي اذا اشتهيت فاعطانا ستاندرد اخر للخطيه حتى يفهمنا هذا الموضوع يعني مش فقط لفعل الخطيه لكن, لكن لجذر الخطيه بالضبط لاصل الخطيه بالضبط اصل الخطيه اللي هي الخطيه زي ما حكى مش بس هي قد تكون فكر عمل او حتى هارد ديزاين او قول هذو كلياتهم موجودين لكن الخطيه بيحكي عن الكتاب المقدس الخطيه خاطئه جدا خطيه خاطئه جدا فرب يسوع ذهب الى اصل القتل من غضب على اخيه باطلا او اصل الزنا من اشتهى امراه في قلبه وعشان كده يفادي الرسول بولس بيقول يعني الموضوع مش بس في الخطايا اللي بعملها الخارجه مني القتل والغضب و و و موضوع اكشلي في الطبيعه الفاسده اللي جوايا اللي هي اصل يعني مصنع كل دوت واكشلي الاثنين مع بعض <تصفيق> مشاكل مركبه جدا فعشان كده الرسول بولس بيقول من اجل ذلك انما بانسان واحد دخلت الخطيه الى العالم وبالخطيه الموت وهكذا اجتاز الموت الى جميع الناس اذ اخطا الجميع. يعني مشكله مركبه خطيه ساكنه فيا وخطيه بعملها واحنا و... نتطلع حوالينا بس طلع حواليك الخطيه خاطئه جدا موجوده بكل مكان. احنا في شمال امريكا اليوم الخطيه تتمحور حول كل شيء ما هو ضد الله م. الخطيه لما نشوفها الناس اللي عم تقتل بدون اي رافه بدون اي رحمه عم نشوفها على التلفزيونات الخطيه خاطئه جدا انسان بالفعل فاسد فساد الانسان واضح جدا ان اليوم ما فيش اي حدا ممكن يحكي الانسان ممكن يكون صالح لانه كنا شايفين في بعض الاصدقاء اللي بيامنوا بموضوع اللي هو الإنسانية 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 تحيي وهي صادقة لكن أنا مشكلتي مع هذا الموضوع أطلع على أطلع على نفسي أطلع على أي واحد فينا بيقدر اليوم يخلي الرفلكشن عن كل الأفكار اللي فكر فيها تطلع على فيديو ويشوفوها الناس بالكرمة أي واحد فينا أنا بتحدى أي شخص يعمل هيك ليه؟ لأنه نحن لسه مع أننا إحنا أخذنا الطبيعة جديدة لكننا نصارع هذا الجسد نصارح هذا النيتشر هذه الطبيعه الخاصه فينا فهذا كله بياكد لنا اهميه قدسيه الله خطيه الخطيه او خطا الخطيه والاحتياج الى الصليب سو ذا 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 بروبلم از كومبليكيتد از بروفاوند اتس نوت جست سينز ذات اي كوميت لايك وات فادي واز الودينج تو جيسس سبوك اباوت ذا نيتش ذا ذا the heart of sin so it's not just ten commandments killing it is the heart of killing or murder thou shalt not murder it is the heart of murder which is anger right so there is a, a factory within me that produces sin and there is sin that i commit and this is kind of a complicated problem so in romans 5 12 it says therefore just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin so death spread to all men because all sin so it's like it's the complicated problem that we are dealing with sin is so grave and jesus took us to the level to the deeper level of sin and sin is primarily against god right yeah. it's like 
it's a violation of God's law, God's holiness, God's nature. Mm -hmm. So we're in trouble, folks, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So we spent half of the episode outlining the problem. Yeah, if you want to complicate the problem, <laughs> yeah, you're a pastor, you can, you know. Uh, I just thought of a, a picture that God himself gives in Jeremiah. He says, he calls creation, the heavens, the earth, all creation. He says, be appalled. Look at all of this and be appalled. My people, the people I've created, they've seen me, they've looked to me, and they've turned away. They've abandoned the fountain of living waters, mm. and they're digging for wells that can produce no water, mm. right? And so the human condition, the problem with sin at its core, right? The fruit of sin, lies, adultery, whatever you name it. That's not the issue. The issue is the root. And the root is we say no to God. We're looking for dry wells. We're digging for something that cannot satisfy. Mm. And God is saying, look and be appalled. I can give you living water. Mm. But you go, nah, no. So it's from both sides. Tarakuni ana haya. They left me the spring of living water and they have dug to themselves uh, yeah. wells that do not bring water. They don't bring water. And they have to give them their own lives. In this moment, in this time, when the listeners are listening and they are watching us, what does it mean to the people who don't have the water? In this moment, they will come to the truth. Because ممكن واحد يجرب كل شيء وهنا بشمال امريكا بكندا بالذات الناس جربت الشباب عندنا بيجربوا انت بتعرف باليوث مينستري اباوت دراجز يعني دراجز ناو از ليجل اكشلي الويد از ليجل ان كندا و بس تراينج اذر تايبس اوف دراجز ده مش دعوه لاي حد انه يشرفنا في كندا لانه في انواع مخدرات للاسف بقت مقننه ومش بس كده ولسه احنا ما اكتشفناش الاثار السلبيه المخدرات خصوصا الحشيشه والويد على الانسان خصوصا الصغار العمر احنا اكشلي عم يعني بنشوف هذا الحكي كل يوم بيومه لكن بدي احكي انه الانسان بجرب كل هذه التفاصيل صلاتي بهذا اليوم انه بهذا الاسبوع تستخد هذا الفرصه وهذا الوقت المناسب حتى تفكر هل انت مكتفي داخليا باي شيء بتعمله هل انت في عندك هذا الاكتفاء ان كان مخدرات ان كان اي انواع ابار مختلفه هل هذا عم بيعطيك ساتسفاكشن ولا انت لسه تحتاج الى الله اعتقاد الشخص اذا الانسان رجع لنفسه رح يحكي زي ما مح... اذا بولس اذا رسول بولس حكى ويحي انا الانسان الشقي اذا رسول بولس حكى انا ايش ممكن احكي هذه اللحظه ان حتى نفكر ونفتكر وان نرجع الى الله الصالح you know, um... Arthur Pink has this uh, quote. In the beginning, God, apply this principle to the present situation. Begin with the world as it is today and try to wo and work and try and work back to God and everything will seem to show that God has no connection with the world at all. But begin with God and work down to the world and light, much light is cast on the problem. Because God is holy, His anger burns against sin. Because God is righteous, His judgments fall upon those who rebel against Him. Because God is faithful, the solemn threatenings of His word are fulfilled. وَلَأَنَّ اللَّهَ أَمِينٌ فَتَحْذِيرَاتُ كَلِمَتُهُ تُتَمَّمْ Because God is omnipotent, none can successfully resist Him. وَلَأَنَّ اللَّهَ كُلِّهِ الْقُدْرَةِ فَلَا يُوْجَدْ أَحَدْ كَائِنًا مَنْ كَانْ يَسْتَطِيعَ أَنْ يُقَاوِمُ Still let's overthrow His counsel. أو يلقي بمشورته جانبا. And because God is omniscient, no problem can master Him. And no difficulty baffle his wisdom. Okay. 
It is just because God is who he is and what he is that we are now beholding on earth what we do, the beginning of his outward judgments. Now, God is, is what He is, holy, faithful, um, omnipotent, omniscient, and so loving. So what is the solution? Is there a solution? And historically, men have tried so many solutions. So men have tried to appease God, overcome their sin, through so many ways. And they have all failed, miserably. Can you expand on that so that you know, our precious viewers would not waste more time mm -hmm. um, going about their ways to appease and satisfy a holy God in the wrong way? So what, what are the ways that fell short of God's glory and um, the problems of that? Maybe in a nutshell, and we just want to warn our viewers against them because it seems like there's only one Solution. One and only. The first thing that the Dayan is to do is to be able to do to be to be able to do it. But the Dayan is to be to do it. Because you can do it in the same way. And I'm going to tell you that the Dayan is to be able to do it. The Dayan is to be able to do it. The Dayan is to ثقافة بآسيا بأمريكا بأوروبا وكل الأشكال فهناك هذا الشكل تدين وأنا في بالي يحضرني حتى أنت في بالك مش في بالي في بالي بالضبط <تصفيق> حتى في يعني ريت أروح بالي بالي منطقة حلوة والآن في كندا أنت شاف الطقس اليوم شتاء ومبارح تلج يعني بس هذه ضريبة الغربة فالذحكي إنه تدين هو واحد من الطرق اللي حاول فيه الإنسان لكن أثبت فشله بطريقة غريبة جدا خلاص إذا في عندك أي فكرة إيش رأيك الموضوع هو؟ So uh, Fairy spoke about um, religiousness or apparent religiousness of man mankind and مش كيف هي فعلا؟ بالضبط برافو عليك أنا حاسة نقصة نقصة حتة النقصة الحتة اللي هي الروح أنا ممكن أكون متدين بالشكل بدون ما يكون في عندي علاقة صحيحة مع الله الحقيقي فأنا ممكن أكون متدين وأعبد نفسي ممكن أكون متدين وأعبد بقرة زي بعض الحضارات ممكن أكون متدين وأعبد الورقة زي صاحب الهندي ممكن أكون متدين وأعبد إله غير الإله الصحيح غير الإله الحقيقي هذا هو التدين أن يكون في عندي الشكل التدين لكن من جوا ما يكون في عندي هذا الروح بيحكي عن الكتاب اللي هو زي القبور من برا بتكون تلمع ومن جوا بتكون خراب وموت إيش المثل المصري من بلا من برا هلا هلا من جوا يعلم الله يعلم الله أوكي فهذا الفكر هذا هو التدين هذا هو التدين في الحضارات المختلفة so first thing is this false righteousness, I mean, or um, religiousness. That is, it, it is apparent righteousness, but no power. Because the no heart, spirit. no spirit, the heart. And, and of course, the, the idiom that our Lord Jesus used is a graveyard. You know, it looks brilliant from the outside, but it is death from within. I would say it's very humbling to understand and accept the truth that you, there's nothing you can do. Hmm. You need a savior. I need a savior. I bring nothing to the table but my sin, right? So we, we live in, in a world. So this is my contribution to the solution. It's my, my sin. sin. My sin. I have no other. And, no. I have nothing else. And so we live in a, in a world, in a, in, 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 in a culture 
that where you're taught from, from early on that you work and you work and you work and you have rewards. And so you work for certain things and you're rewarded for what you work, right? And you get what you pay for. Mm. And so the idea that my works mean nothing. I bring nothing. And my goodness is like filthy rags. It's like, it's very yeah. humbling. But you have, we have to come to terms with that truth and say. So why doesn't, because this is a very important thing. I think the scale, I mean, people have in their mind the scale, right? So, I mean, do you do more good stuff, more deeds or less? So, so I, think, I, think the, I think what's important there, especially if you read Galatians 3, is the idea is that God's law demands perfection. Mm. Um, that has to be very clear. Like, that's what Paul's argument in Romans 3, verse 10, where he says, For all who rely on the works of the law are under curse, for it is written, Curse everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. The implication of that verse, even though he doesn't actually spell it out, is that nobody can do, like, all of the works of the law. <laughs> you know? If you try to do it, Paul says, then, he says in Galatians 5, he says, then you're obligated to keep the whole law, mm. which you can't do. And so the very idea is, because sometimes people question the idea of like, well, does God really demand perfection? Um, but just think about the, he set up an animal sacrifice, sacrificial system in the Old Testament. Why did he even do that, right? Mm. If he's grading on a curve, he could have just been like, yeah, you guys are pretty good, it's okay, you'll get in, you know? Even the smallest sins, sins that are, you know, unintentional sins, there still needed to be an atonement, a sacrifice for them, mm. which goes to show you how holy God is. Mm. His perfection is the standard. So you can't, he can't like go around it. He can't be like, you know what? I know you tried your best, you know, but you know. So I'll give you like a push. Yeah, yeah, no bell way. curve. You know, well, sure, why not? Yeah. <laughs> it's, true. it's he, that like his righteousness, his holiness is the standard, mm. and so therefore. That's why he's the only one who can provide a solution. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, just to summarize, Will, so uh, false religi religiosity wouldn't help. The um, good works wouldn't help because I cannot, from myself, bring good works. It's a filthy, rugged uh, um, cloth. And the only standard is perfection. So there's no way I can save myself through that. Mm. Now, let's come to the sacrificial system, but Will, you wanted to add? No, because you, you talked about the finding the balance between the scale, you know, the, scale the, the good works. and So I, again, God looks at the heart, right? We don't, we can't see the heart. So it, yes, you're encouraged to do good works, but you're not doing good works mm. in order to gain salvation. It's, I do good works because I've been saved. And it's my gratitude to the Savior. I want to serve this Lord who came to save me. It's a very different um, uh, motivation. Your heart's motive is different than it has to be. And it will not be apart from God. Only God can change the heart. Amen. Mungkin bisa jawab lano rafi hakam mabuwa ktir muhim lhati fi ambakar min Rumia lan huwa مكتوب كما هو مكتوب أنه ليس بار ولا واحد ليس من يفهم ليس من يطلب الله الجميع زاغوا وفسدوا معا ليس من يعمل صلاحا ليس ولا واحد بعدين بيكمل بحكي حجرتهم قبر مفتوح أنا بعتقد هذا جواب على فكرة الديانة التدين أو حتى فكرة الأعمال ليس بار ولا واحد واو Fedi read from Romans 3, they all have turned aside, together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. Their throat is an open grave. They use their tongues to deceive. The venom of asps is under their lips. Their mouth is full of cur curses and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. The way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. And they are all quotations from the Old Testament and all say that man is doomed to death. So there is this spiritual death, there is this physical death, and eternal death. 
No solutions have helped. So what is the solution? Amen. Ma huwa al-hal? Salib. Salib. The cross. The cross. The cross. Agile sacrificial system, yes. because that's foundational in understanding why the cross. I think we're very close to the solution now. <laughs> what is the sacrificial system and why was it there? Why is it there? Why is it there? Why is it there? والدم يعني في العهد القديم في الشريعة في فكر الله إيه فكرة الدم ذبائح sacrifices bloodshed what is that why is that so in the Old Testament especially if you read Leviticus God is constantly saying that He's holy and any time you try to get anywhere near His presence whether it's in the tabernacle or the temple you need sacrifices mm -hmm. He says that all the time like you always need sacrifices because the idea is you are unclean and you need to be purified in order to enter into God's presence so because we are unclean all right there's many different pictures of our uncleanness our impurity sacrifices is a reminder to all the people that this is what this is what this is how bad sin is to God you know it requires death Hmm. You know, it requires death. And so God set up this sacrificial system, especially Leviticus 16, the Day of Atonement, um, when the high priest, you know, would essentially uh, put his hands on the goat, right, and confess all the sins of the people on the goat and send the goat out into the wilderness. And then the other goat he would take in and he'd slaughter Slutters. and he'd take the blood and, you know, Splash it on the uh, the the mercy seat or the, the like the box that holds the Ten Commandments, the mercy seat, mm. um, and ultimately, obviously, that, that and, and fills the place, the holy of holies, with incense, because the mercy seat now represents the presence of God. Right. So he doesn't want even to mess with it. Right. Exactly. It's like to be at that distance from the holiness of God. Yeah. It's scary. It is scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But even that. Even that, and especially this becomes very clear in the New Testament, does not take away sin. <laughs> it's a picture, but it doesn't take away sin. It doesn't ultimately remove so sin. So it is a pointer to the demands of God, yeah. the method of God, yeah. but it was not enough. It was not sufficient. So one illustration that uh, I, one scholar, he said, and I really liked it, it was helpful. He said, suppose you need gas for your car. Okay, you go to the gas station, and you use your credit card and you pay for the gas, all right? So, the question is, did you pay for your gas? It's kind of a trick question. It's like, well, yes and no. Well, yes, in the sense that your credit card, you know, paid and the gas company got their, their money and you got gas. But no, in the sense because money hasn't been taken out from your account yet. You know, like a month later, you get your credit card statement and you see, you see okay, that's the only thing on, on, on your statement, then you pay it off. And then you pay it off. That's kind of the same way. Mm -hmm. So with, with the believers in the Old Testament, their sins were ultimately paid for by Christ. So in the same way that when you pay your credit card, this, the animal sacrifice is kind of paid for their sins, but not really. It wasn't until Christ came and then he actually removed their sins in the same way when you pay mm -hmm. off your credit card bill. So they were pointers, they were signs, they were symbols. Yeah. Of the real sacrifice, yes. Of mm. the complete sacrifice, mm. and I venture to say, of the only sacrifice. Of the only sacrifice. Yeah. Well said, a very important phrase. It takes God to satisfy God. Yeah. I don't think logically that animals could atone for man, because I think the sacrificial system gives us the idea that it's life for life, right? Mm -hmm. In Leviticus it says that the life of um, the person is in, or the life of the soul is in the blood. So it's like the bloodshed, it's life for life, right? Yeah. So animal's life is not worth my life, it's much less. And uh, I don't think that, you know, I know, Will, you're a pastor, you're, you know, a godly man, a holy man, but I don't think you can redeem me because no. <laughs> we all need, no. you know, yeah. a redeemer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, even as we talk about the Old Testament and the sacrificial system and, and all of these uh, 
foreshadowing or, or typologies that pointed to the promise, right? From the very beginning, God started making promises that a savior would come, mm. right? And I think of the words of Zechariah, where the people are in great distress. They're hurting, there's poverty, there's hunger. They were just um, under, you know, uh, the Babylonian government. It was just, it was tyrannical. And here comes Zechariah and says, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he. Amen. Right? So there's hope for you. Mm. Even though this sacrifice or whatever it is that you have to do right now doesn't take away your sin and you're in the middle of the, the chaos, there's hope. Mm. Your king, the Messiah, your, sal your salvation is coming for you. And he's righteous. And he has salvation for you. Mm. It's not just the king that is coming. This king is righteous and he brings salvation. Mm. And so that, mm. that is the hope if you're looking at, you know, Old Testament people pointing to the, the coming salvation. I think the first time there was a reference to the salvation is the queen. <تصفيق> لما الله كان عم بيحكي بي الله بكلم ادم بيحكي له بتكوين 2 17 واما شجره معرفه الخير والشر فلا تاكل منها لانك يوم تاكل منها موتا تموت <تصفيق> وصح اللي بعده بصح ثلاثه بالفعل بيجي ادم وحواء بياكلوا من هذه الشجره من الثمره وما كانش في موت لكن بيحكي الكتاب والبسهما لبس جلدي الجلد لبسه من جلد بالتالي كان في هناك ذبيحة وكأنه هناك صار في موت لكنه ما كان في موت فعلي للإنسان بهذه اللحظة وهذا مفهوم أنا بعتقد مفهوم الكفارة مفهوم الصلب مفهوم قداسة الله محبته اللي هي مع بعض إجت بهذه اللحظات وهذا تعطي هذه الإشارة عشان هيك اللي بيحكي رافي كان مهم مهم من عيده بالعربي كمان أنه كل الذبائح كانت بعهد القديم كانت تشير الى صلب المسيح، دم المسيح اللي اجى قبل 2000 سنه غطى ال 2000 سنه اللي قبليهم بالعهد القديم. فدم المسيح هو محور الحياه. صلب المسيح هو محور الحياه وهو اللي بيغطي هذه الخطيه. امم امين. You know in Romans 5 it says for while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Mm. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, one would even dare to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. لأن المسيح كنا بعد ضعفاء مات في الوقت المعين لأجل الفجار فإنه بالجهد يموت أحد لأجل بار ربما لأجل الصالح يكسر أحد أيضا أن يموت ولكن الله بيّن محبته لنا ونحن لأنه ونحن وبعض قطاط مات المسيح لأجلنا So we were sinners fully depraved fully helpless we cannot help ourselves let alone help others and in that depraved situation in that miserable status Christ died for us to fulfill God's holiness to forgive our sins and to set us free hmm. um, to me that's the most precious mm -hmm. piece of information that I have under the sun mm -hmm. right? yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. that God has satisfied God mm -hmm that the sacrificial system now is effective because the real sacrifice has come. Mm -hmm. You know, atam al khalas. I want us to expand now on the message of the cross because it is God's power unto salvation. It is God's wisdom and God's power like we were starting to say. Amen. So, um, the message of the cross is being fought from right and left. But again, first and foremost, it is the only way 
for our sins to be forgiven and for God to prove his love for us and for his holiness to be satisfied and for his love to be demonstrated and effective on the cross. Fedi was telling me the other day about the gravity of the cross, the, the, the significance of what happens on the cross. Fedi could tell him and يعني مش بس لماذا الكفارة لكن لماذا الصليب كأداة الكفارة تري كلام يعني خطير الصليب تم اكتشافه كأداة قتل 300-400 سنة قبل الميلاد من قبل الفرس وكانت الهدف منه يعملوا طريقة معينة للقتل تكون طريقة عذاب بطيء عذاب بطيء مذلة جدا فيها ذل عشانك بيحكي كتاب عن العهد القديم بيحكي عن الصليب لعنة ففيه لعنة معينة لعنة معينة وبالتالي بيحمل كل هذه التفاصيل لأن اليهود ما كانوش بيعلقوا على الصليب لأنه ملعون كل من علق على خشب أمين. فطلعت وقت الفرس وطبعا وقت الفارس احنا فاكرين همان لما عمل الصليب الخشب لمرض خاي وهو تصلب عليه فيعني وحتى شكل الصليب على كل حال هو بتعرف اذا ممكن نحكي عنه اكثر بس شكل الصليب يقال انه انت مهندس فلازم تتكلم عن الشكل يعني شكل الصليب هو حرف تي بالانجليزي امم حرف التي لانه الفوق هاي بيكون اللي بتحط لما تذكر ما حطوا على الصليب علقوا عليه هو ملك اليهود او صح. عله صح. عله المسيح هو ملك اليهود فعله الصلب بتبقى محطوطه زي التهمه يعني زي التهمه بتاعته فهو كان حاط عليها راسه من ورا لكن لما تطلع ماذا حصل على الصليب شيء تعرف كان يحطوا المسمار كان كان طوله حوالي 20 سم من 17 ل 22 سم هذا المسمار والصليب والمسمار ما كان نحط هون لو نحط هون كان كل هذول انجرح كان راحه الايد وقع الصليب كان حط بهذا المنطقه في الراس في بالضبط وبالتالي صار في ديسلوكيشن صار في ديسلوكيشن للشولدرز او للالبوز فبطل في يعني حتى ايدين المسيح سموها هنا البريكل بلكسس اللي هو الاعصاب فيحطها هنا في في مكان الاعصاب تطلع كل الاعصاب تفلت يعني عارف ليه؟ عشان يكون الم اكثر فتخيل هذا المنظر هذا العذاب الجسدي احنا لسه ما حكينا عذاب نفسي ولا حكينا عن العذاب الروحي لكن نحكي عن الالام الجسديه كانت عنيفه جدا عنيفه جدا فهو على الصليب معلق على الصليب وهذا ممكن نحكي عنها لما حكى عن سبع جمل على الصليب هذا كله بيعطينا اهميه الصليب فبالنسبه لليهود كان عندهم متعه انه يشوفوا المسيح على الصليب لانه هذا لعنه فكروا وجود الصليب راح يمحي اي فكر عن المسيح كقائد روحي مم. عن المسيح ككفاره على الخطايا عن المسيح كملك اليهود الاتي مم. فاعتقدوا ان المسيح الصليب لما صار الصليب هو لعنة لكن الله بالفكر الازلي تبعه كان عنده فكر مختلف كليا خلى هذا الصليب هو سبب وجودنا اليوم انا وياك واحنا كنا وجودك وبتمنى كمان حتى مشاهدين يكون هذا هو سبب وجودك الصليب الكفار العمل الكفاري على الصليب فهذا الصليب كان اداه لعنه لكن الله جعله اداه لخلاصي انا وانت <تصفيق> It seems that the cross is our only hope. Um, and in it, God's righteousness was fulfilled. Can, can you, um, Rafi, can you just um, address quickly the message of the cross and why is it the only way of forgiveness? Why, you know, we've, we've said why couldn't God forgive the other way, but but that the atonement is that only way God forgives and that's his way of forgiveness. And this is the core of the message of the cross. Right. Before um, you will do this, before Will would present you know, to our viewers a clear summary of the gospel message, because um, we, we are you know, coming to a conclusion, inviting everybody to consider um, the cross and the gospel. Right, so the connection between the cross and forgiveness. I think um, because this is often a question people have is like, well, why does God require the cross? Why can't he just forgive people? That's a common objection people will give. Um, 
and I've heard it many times. I think it's, you know, you can just use an illustration first to, to make the general theological point is that, you know, if, if, I, uh, if I borrow $10,000 from you and I say I will pay it back to you in, in, in one year, okay, and one year comes and I have 43 cents in my bank account, right, I can't pay you back. And you say, it's okay, Rafi, I forgive you, you don't have to pay it back. Well, what happened there? Well, I was set free. I don't no longer have to pay you back. But it was very costly to you. Hmm. You know, it wasn't free for you. It was very costly for you. So in the same way with God, in our relationship with God, um, our forgiveness is free to us. You know, that's the best news, like you were saying before. That's one of the things that cross comes is it's free. We don't have to do anything. It's a gift. I love gifts. Hmm. <laughs> I love Christmas. But it was very costly to God. So God in the person of His Son, so the Son of God, who's also God, incarnate, hates sin, took sin on the cross. He absorbed sin on the cross. In the same way that when you decide to forgive me, you have to absorb that cost. Hmm. You know, it's costly to you, so it's costly to God. And on the cross, He absorbed sin. He took on the judgment and wrath of God and extends forgiveness for free. That's how forgiveness and the cross work together. So grace is free, but it's not cheap. And there is a price that has to be paid. Yeah. And God, in His grace, yeah. by grace, paid the price. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> على فكرة أول كلمة كانت المسيح على الصليب يا أبي اغفر لهم لأنهم لا يعلمون ماذا يفعلون مفهوم الفورجيفنس أو المسامحة كان موجود على الصليب أول جملة حكى المسيح على الصليب هو وضوع الغفران الغفران اغفر فابن قال له إنه لأنه هو كله عم وضوع الغفران بهذا الموضوع. In a nutshell, what is the message of the cross? That is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Well. For God so loved the world mm. that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of of the only Son of God. So it's love. Mm. You look at the New Testament and, and the main emotion that, is, that we're told about Jesus, the, the main emotion he had was compassion. He had compassion on a people who were like sheep without a shepherd. And God wants a people to himself, a people that will be his forever. Mm -hmm. And so we believe the message of the gospel that mm. he loved the world mm. in such a way that he sent his only son so that those who believe will not perish but have eternal life. Amen. Amen. So, so if I'm answering really this question, if I'm asking this question, why the atonement? Why the cross? God is so holy. Man is so sinful. Sin is so bad. Man has tried through religiosity, through good works, through obeying the law and have failed miserably. And what was the cause of sin? What was the result of sin? It is death. Moral death, physical death, and eternal death and judgment. The only solution is the cross that God himself will satisfy the demands of a holy God by shedding his blood on the cross to atone for sin so that his life would flow to me, so that forgiveness would cover my sins, so that my sins would be forgiven, so that his life would give me life. Hmm. But that's part of the solution. Because when I go back, why God? So it is not just why would 
the atonement be necessary. Why did you do that, God? Why did you ever consider saving the sinful mankind? And the answer that you've just shared. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. أحبائي حينما نسأل لماذا الصليب لماذا الكفارة إن الله قدوس مطلق القداسة مما يجعله بعيدا عن خليقته منزه في قداسته معتزا بالقداسة والإنسان خاطي في خط... مطقع الخطية طبيعته خاطئة وحياته خاطئة ونتيجة الخطية أجرة الخطية هي موت لأن الخطية خطيئة جدا سواء كان موت أدبي لحظي أو موت فعلي جسدي أو موت أبدي ثاني لأن هذا هو الموت الثاني ولأن كل محاولات الإنسان قصرت وفشلت من تدين زائف من أعمال صالحة لا تجدي من محاولات إرضاء النموس لكن المشكلة أعمق من الأعمال ومن التدين المشكلة في الداخل في قلب الإنسان الفاسد لذلك لا يوجد حل غير أنه الله بنفسه يقول الكتاب لما جاء ملء الزمان أرسل الله ابنه مولودا من عذراء مولودا من امرأة مولودا تحت النموس ليفتدي الذين هم تحت النموس لأننا للتبني لا يوجد حل غير أن الله بنفسه يرسل ابنه لكي يبذل ويسفك دمه حتى ما يطهر هذا الدم الإنسان من خطاياه حتى ما يسيل الدم فتذهب حياته لنا حتى ما يضع توضع خطايا العالم على هذا الابن ويسفك دمه فداء لها ومحبة للمؤمنين به بس هو السؤال الحقيقي طب ليه يا رب يعني ماشي احنا عرفنا انه ما ينفعش غير الصليب بس ليه أصلا ترسل ابنك علشان يصلب علشان تلك البشرية الساقطة الفاسدة اللي كتاب يقولها أعداء احنا في الأصل أعداء الله أموات بالذنوب والخطايا والإجابة في كلمة واحدة لأنه هكذا أحب هكذا أحب الله العالم حتى بذل ابنه الوحيد لكي لا يهلك كل من يؤمن به بل تكون له الحياة الأبدية لأنه الله أحب لذلك أرسل لكي يفدي ويخلص لكي لا يهلك أحد لكي لا يهلك من يؤمن به بل تكون له الحياة الأبدية So I leak in the heart. The question is for you today. We've answered the question, why the cross? Why the atonement? And the answer is, really, because God loved. But the question is for you now. So I'll have a leak. Hal tatub wa taqbal amal Allah la'aglak? Hal tu'min بصليب ربنا مخلصنا يسوع المسيح Would you repent and accept God's work for you? Would you come in faith putting your trust in Christ in the cross of Christ and accept by faith His grace? His grace is free but it is so costly نعمته مجانية لكنها مكلفة جدا هنسيبك بالسؤال دوت جاوبنا على سؤال لماذا الصليب هنسألك النهاردة هل قبلت صليب ربنا وخلصنا يسوع المسيح Have you accepted the cross of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ لو عندك أي تساؤلات استفسارات اعتراضات 
او حابب تصلي مع حد وتقول له يا رب انا قبلت الصليب قبلت الكفاره عايز اتبعك فضلك كلم الارقام الموجوده على الشاشه ابعت ايميل لقناه الكارما اتواصل عن طريق الفيسبوك الماسنجر اتواصل بكل الطرق عايزين نساعدك وعايزين نمشي معاك في رحله اتباع المسيح نشوفكم في حلقه جديده من برنامجكم خطوات قدام شكرا فادي ثانك يو ويل ثانك يو رافي جو بلس يو هابي ايستر ماي ذا كروس اند ريزركشن بي افكتيف ان اور لايفز اند مينستريز فور هيز جلوري